Right, High Fire Adventure starts. We're off to Whittam in Essex. It's about a three hour drive. It's going to be fun. We're going to play with lots of big boys toys today. I cannot wait. One quick question. Did you shut the back door? Of course. Good. Let's go then. <laughs> <laughs> Darfur Tunnel. This is taking a long time, but it'll be worth it because we get to play with hi-fi toys. And I do like to play with hi-fi toys. What I would say though, Darfur Tunnel, not a fan. Not a fan of queuing. Not a fan of tunnels. All right then, we'll be there soon. Bye. So we're here, we have arrived at Reference Audio. This is really exciting because we've got free reign of all of their listening rooms and all of their equipment. So we get to listen to stuff that's really high end, stuff that's a bit more kind of what most people can afford. And we get to mix and match things, including listening to a cinema room with a Dolby Atmos system with huge subs, playing a bit of PlayStation. This is, this is like heaven for me. I cannot wait to get stuck in. So. Come with me and let's see what we can find. Okay everyone, this is it. We are in the big room and in here we've got some very, very special equipment indeed. In fact, for, for me, this is a real treat because I don't get the opportunity to listen to equipment this big back home because simply it wouldn't fit in small room studios. So what have we got to listen to? Well, speakers first of all, this is the brand new Bowles and Wilkins 801D4. So what have we got? You've got the diamond tweeter at the top, separated out in this nice little compartment, giving you big expansive highs. The mid-range with the continuum driver, of course, love the way it realizes mid-range out of that driver. And here, fantastic carbon, big boosting based bins or base whoopers if you like. What's really special about this of course is you have to drive it and how is this being driven. It's got dual monoblocks and not just any dual monoblocks. In fact we have behind me Macintosh MC901's dual mono power amplifiers which have both solid state and tube output which means spectacularly you can drive the upper frequencies and the mids on tubes and then use the power of solid state and that control down here in the bass woofers. And I will have a little listen to this system in a minute and tell you exactly what that sounds like. Not only do we have incredible monoblock amplifiers driving this, we also have an amazing source, something that's very familiar to a lot of you. That's the Inua statement as a server driving Tidal into a BAT reference DAC, which is simply phenomenal. And then into the Macintosh MC12000 preamplifier, which has those beautiful green glowing tubes. It really is something spectacular just to look at, let alone listen to. And I can't wait now to bust out a few tunes and describe to you what it sounds like. Right, I just wanted to take a minute to look a little bit more in detail at this Macintosh MC901 dual mono power amplifier. There are two of these in the system, one for each channel. And you know I love me some tubes. And here we have lovely tubes. You've got four KT88s on this side, and on the other side another four, so there's eight in total on this mono block and you've got three 12.8.7s here and on the other side you've got six 12.8.7s in total. This pumps out 300 watts of tube power which is perfect for those highs on the Bowers and Wilkins and it also pumps out 600 watts of solid state power. And look at it, it's massive. I wouldn't even dream of trying to pick this thing up. It must be, oh well, ridiculously heavy. I think you'd have to be a strong man to lift it but it's an incredible piece. It's a real statement. You'd need a lot of room to house it, but you'd be proud of it. It looks a bit like a steam train, doesn't it? At the back here with the transformer, the lovely tubes glowing, and then you can imagine like a, a big sort of, you know, chimney coming out the top, steam training through. It is a whopper and wow, what, what a piece of engineering. What a piece that you just want to look at and mesmerize, get mesmerized by those tubes. It's, whoppingly huge, whoppingly expensive at £23,000 a piece, so you need two of them, remember. But yeah, this is high-end hi-fi and very, very cool indeed. Right, we've just finished listening to this incredible system. It's so visceral, there's so much impact. The bass, you know, we just feel it. It is mad with those huge rel subwoofers at the back there. I mean, the bass out of the Bowles & Wilkins 801 D4s on their own is 
something else, but pairing the rails, it, blah, mind blowing, so awesome. Now this isn't a review of any of this incredible kit because it's not in a familiar environment. I've not spent nearly enough time with it, although I was able to play my own tune through Rune and also listen to um, a bit of vinyl on the SME player. And I've got to say, as a digital advocate, having listened to a 20 grand vinyl experience on that back there, I might be a bit of a convert. The vinyl sounded better. It was just richer, fuller, easier listening. I don't know if it's just better synergy with this kind of diamond tweeter and the fact that it's very exacting, but whew, that, was, that was good. That was a really good vinyl experience. Sadly, I'm gonna have to stay a digital man because I've just got nowhere to put all the vinyl, but this is starting to convert me in terms of, does it sound better in this room with this setup? Yes, it does, but yeah, wow. This was great. Let's see what other treasures we can find upstairs in the other listening rooms. I'm surrounded by speakers, lots of amazing, awesome equipment. We got some Bowles and Wilkins, some Kef R5, some PMCs, Monus Rodeo, got some Kudos speakers, audio vector speakers with a gold ribbon. They look nice. Come on a bit of a tour. Um, just have a quick look at the audio vector first here. That gold ribbon there, it is. That is a smart looking speaker. It actually kind of stands out amongst some of these other towers just for the finish there with the silver rings and that lovely ribbon. Like to see what they sound like. Moving on round, we go to the American section. There we've got some Klipsch Heresy 4s and some Forte 4s. Love these little Heresy 4s, way they lean back, very sensitive. Great fun, those. I've actually got some Forte 4s at the moment in for review in Small Room Audio. Work better than you think in a small room. You think maybe a horn's a bit hot. If you work at it, you get great results from that speaker. But it's not a plonk and play, that's for sure. Moving on around to the Italian section, where we get the finest of leather tops and also some very nicely finished uh, Olympica Novas. And then onto the Amateur 3s, which I used to own with the marble base and the plinth there. Great Italian craftsmanship. Moving on around, you've got the new, um, new range from uh, Bowles and Wilkins. I think they are the 803 d 4s I might be wrong there, but I think that's what those are. Monitor Auto Platinum, some Martin speakers. I'm reliably informed that these sound epic. Haven't heard them, but they do look pretty nice. I do like the white drivers of those. Some Monitor Audios. Over here as well, I think that might be the silver series from the looks of it, or well, perhaps even the gold. What's it say on the back? Let's have a look. That is the silver series. I was right first time, not the golds. I do like the way they do their um, tweeters in the gold color. Back to America now with the mighty Macintosh, the blue and green. We've got the MA252 integrated over there. That's a pretty cool little integrated tube. I like the little tube cages as well. And of course, they all glow green when they are on. And we've got some turntables down there from Project as well. A nice one over here. Look at this one. This is a cool plinth like that. Very, very cool. Then we go to Wee Buddy Scotland because we've got Fine Audio. For anyone that doesn't know, Fine Audio looks a little bit like Tannoy, doesn't it? That's because the people from Tannoy went and set up Fine Audio and um, hence forth some similar sort of designs, but great imaging, great sort of atmospheric sound coming from the Fine equipment. Very impressed with those, particularly actually really like the finish on these. These are the, I think these are the F5s, if I'm right. You can change the kind of settings on them as well. That little dial, that's really nice to touch. And it's quite small, but for a small room, these would be great. I bet they image incredibly well. Here we are, the 805 D4s, diamond tweeter, of course, continuum driver, very nice. I think that's the Kef R3s moving through, some fine 500s, PMCs, some more Martin speakers. I bet these would be good for small room audio. I'd like to get a pair of those. I'll see if I can uh, work the magic. Coming over here, we've got some sources. Good old Inuus. Um, I believe we might be looking at the Inuus Phoenix USB. Yep, we used to have one of those. This is what we have reviewed that. Going over here, ah, oh, this is a familiar shape. Mola Mola, I have a Tambaki at home. These are the monoblocks and the preamp. I think the, the Tambaki module was probably in there as well. I think that's the preamp anyway. It might be the integrated, don't know. They all look very nice though with the wavy finish. Uh, we've got some, w, uh, some WBA, some YBA, that's the Passion IA350. 
Um, we've got some bat stuff down here as well. Premier, I think Premier do some great equipment, really, really good value for money, and the sound of it is epic. Down the bottom here, there's a little couple of Rel subs. Um, a little tiny one there, I'm not sure what one that is. It might be the, um, the zero, could be the five, not sure, but yeah, if you need a little bit of more low end, that's very good indeed. And finally, over here, we've got some Kef LS50 Wireless 2, so an active pair of speakers in my favorite color combination of white and kind of bronzy gold. Yeah, there's so much to look at here, isn't there? There's just toys upon toys upon toys, so we better go and do some listening. Here we are in what is probably the smallest of the reference audio listening rooms, but for me, this is, this is our environment, right? This is what we are used to. So I am quite at home here and I really, really like the system that we've got. Starting at the bottom, the source is the Inuus Mini, powered by the Inuus uh, linear power supply. Very, very solid source to start with, but then it gets even better and more expensive as we go along. So at the top here, we've got the Cord Hugo TT2 DAC, also fed uh, by the M scaler. I used to own an M scaler. This is a great bit of kit. Definitely improves source as long as your source is good, and that's a great starting point. So therefore, we are upscaling it, giving it even more transit and attack and detail into the TT2. And then in the pre and power stage, we're going to the Nagra Classic range with the Nagra Classic preamp and the Nagra Classic um, power amp. What I've got to say about this is it is incredibly beautiful casework. It's Swiss, it's lovely, just a touch of it. And then you get the really kind of eccentric switches, like you've gone to a mad scientist convention and you know the volume knob is you know this little pointy thing that you can move around with nice resistance. I feel like I'm in some sort of battleship playing with all of the instruments, it's it's good. And this is the thing about high-end hi-fi like this, it's, it's more than just sound, it's it's the tactile nature of it, it's the, the touchy feeliness, it's kind of feeling like you've got an heirloom or something that you want to show off as well, because you know, you want to be proud of what you, you own. And I think these Nagra pieces are, well, they are something special in terms of finish. Even the corners are kind of smoothed down. It's, um, yeah, it's really rather lovely. And then for me, the best bit of the system it's the speakers. I love the speakers here. It's the TAD ME1s. Now, what the TADs are so good at doing is they have a concentric driver at the top with the mids and the tweeter, which gives you this fantastic soundstage and imaging. The imaging on these is, you know, it's, well, it, it's some of the best I've ever heard. It really is pinpoint accurate but not to the sort of detriment of being musical and, you know, engaging. It, it doesn't distract from the music, it adds to it. And I think the best way of describing the ME1s, they are very, very controlled. They never feel like they're kind of getting ahead of themselves. The timing's really good. Um, the bass actually is quite satisfying. It definitely sounds kind of a little bit smaller, obviously, than you would have from a larger speaker. And actually it sounds smaller than something like my Dynaudio Heritage Special, but it just feels really tight. You're really, really precise, like metronome, particularly with this sort of equipment, which is quite incisive. You know, you've got an epic imaging and soundstage experience. And with the TADs, what they're also really good at doing, they don't sound clinical in any way. They've got that, that heart of the music coming through the mid-range as well. So I was listening to Ramin Karimloo, who's one of my favorite um, pop opera singers. I don't know if that's doing him a disservice as describing him as that, but he sings um, Empty Chairs and Empty Tables from the musical Les Miserables. And um, yeah, I listened to that song through these speakers and I was there. You know, I was there listening to him on stage singing that song. I love these speakers. If you get a chance to listen to the TAD ME1, do so, because they could be, and I don't know because I don't own them, but maybe one day if I'm lucky enough, they could be one of the ultimate small room speakers out there and I would love to put them head to head against the Dynaudio Heritage Special that I've got back home. That would be a treat. Uh, so yeah, this is the smallest room and perhaps one of my favourites of the day. You now find us in what I'd like to term the beautiful room because to my left here 
is the Sonus Faber Olympica Nova 2 speaker, which is simply beautiful. To touch, it is smooth and silky. The speaker grill, although practically pretty much useless because you could put your fingers in there if you're a kid and break all of it, it does look lovely as well. And what it's partnered with gives a, a almost laid back, soft sound that's romantic, almost tubey, but there's no tubes involved because we've got a Hi-Fi Rose streamer and DAC going into the Chord Ultima. This sound here is, well, as I say, it's just very relaxing. It's when you come home from work, you want to have something beautiful in your living room, put any music on, no matter whether it's hard rock or a bit of jazz or some classical, and lean back into your chair and relax. This is what this system does for you. And look, this isn't the most exciting, not the most analytical, not the most detailed system that we've heard here today. In fact, in some ways, it's a little bit too soft around the edges, needs a bit more attack. But for most people in most rooms with no acoustic treatment, who want something that looks great and sounds great, look no further. This is a great option. And I, I just can't get over the look of these speakers. In the flesh, they look so much nicer than they do on the internet. But yeah, I might pep it up a little bit myself with a bit more oomph if I was to put this into small room audio. Right, now for something completely different, as they say in Monty Python, we've got the German physics omnidirectional speakers. And they look a bit weird, but what it does is it fires it up in the cone there and then everywhere around the room, which means that positioning of the stereo field is, is good everywhere, pretty much. Um, but that's not what characterizes them for me in terms of what makes them so impressive. Because in this room here, which is relatively small, I was listening primarily in the you know, primary listening seat in the middle. And they were great, great for a number of reasons. Firstly, the bass. Oh, wow, you would not need a subwoofer with the speakers. And it, I think it's got quite a, a easy, pleasing sound that comes out of it. But more than anything, it's this wall of sound that's just all around you and it's just very, very big. There's huge scale with the German physics speakers. What gives it organic tone can possibly be put down to the equipment to my left. From B Audio, French company, we've got a very nice uh, DAC and amplifier, which actually I'm reliably informed I might be able to test one or two of the B Audio products here back home in small room audio. This was one of the best rooms I think I've heard here with the best combination of, of equipment, but it's certainly these speakers paired with the B Audio gear that makes a very organic and natural experience to the music. And that wall of sound was, yeah, it was quite unusually big and very all encompassing. So I very much enjoyed this one.